I'm Michael Connor. I work in the EY blockchain R&D team. Uh, we're based in London, uh, although we're all over the planet at the moment because of coronavirus. Um, today, uh, I'm going to talk about making dApps decentralized applications for public blockchains, how to make those private. Um, so there's a lot of existing blockchain applications that have been built um, over the last few years over the Ethereum blockchain, the decentralized finance applications, all sorts of really useful blockchain applications. But the problem, or rather an issue that businesses have with them, is that lots of data is private. Um, so businesses, businesses at the moment can't use those applications as they are because they might reveal data when they do blockchain transactions. So today's talk is going to be, well, can we take all of this existing infrastructure and can we plug in privacy somehow so that we can keep all of this great work we've done over the past few years, but just make some of those public inputs private so that businesses can use existing things on the blockchain. Um, so the agenda will be, I'll introduce Nightlight, uh, which is a tool that's been built by EY Blockchain. Uh, it's a library which should help existing app developers make their applications, their ERC721 contracts for non-fungible transfers, or their ERC20 contracts for fungible value transfers, make those applications private. I'll then hopefully give you a demo, uh, a very simple application. We'll start with a bare bones ERC contract. And we'll try and add nightlight like to it to make it private. And then finally, uh, something I'm really excited about is, well, what beyond transfers? Um, so a lot of talk with zero knowledge proofs is how to do transfers privately. Um, but of course, Ethereum unlocks a huge possibility for smart contracts generally. So general computation over a public blockchain. Um, how can we make general computation private? How can we have private contracts more generally over Ethereum? Uh, so we'll look at that quickly at the end as well. So a bit of history, uh, about a year ago, EY released Nightfall uh, and we released it into the public domain open source as Paul talked about. Uh, so we gave everything away, hoping that collectively we can get businesses closer to using the public blockchain uh, sooner. Um, and what did Nightfall do? It was a full application that enabled private transactions over Ethereum. Uh, and the technology it used was ZK Snarks. Um, now, what I won't be doing in this talk is going into how ZK Snarks work. That's quite a hefty subject in itself. Um, so who's this talk aimed at? Well, it's aimed at perhaps app developers, uh, blockchain app developers in particular. Um, it might be applicable to applied cryptographers. And indeed, hopefully anyone who's interested in blockchain or privacy in general might have, they might take something away from this, um, hopefully. But the problem with Nightfall that it was that it was a full application. It was a huge suite of tools. Well, that was an intentional feature. But what we want to knuckle down on now is how do we plug privacy into existing dApps? If we take a look at Nightfall, um, it's got lots of components to it. And the components on the left half um, are ones that a conventional blockchain developer might already be familiar with. So we have a user interface authentication, so allowing users to log in and control their account, um, access to an Ethereum client, Geth, Parity, um, something which can communicate with the blockchain, grab data from the blockchain, and invoke transactions over the blockchain. Um, most applications, or at least the ones we care about for this talk today, will have ERC20 or ERC721 contracts, where public transfers can transfer ownership of goods or uh, underlying assets. And then your application might also have Ethereum account management, so the ability to handle gas, um, to pay for those transactions, and a database to tie everything together so data isn't lost. What Nightfall really brought was this right-hand side to enable private transactions. So we've got private transaction logic, so the difficult cryptography, um, the unusual things that an ordinary blockchain application might not have to handle. So cryptographic commitments, uh, Merkle tree inclusion proofs, creating ZK snarks, we use Socrates. Uh, and the next talk will be by Jacob and Thibaut. Um, they'll be talking about how to use the Socrates toolkit. Well, Nightfall is a wrapper around that toolkit specifically for doing zero knowledge transfers. What else does Nightfall include? It includes private contracts. So alongside your ERC20 or ERC721 contract, 
you deploy an extra contract called the shield contract, and that enables you to hold tokens in escrow while private transactions happen behind the scenes. And finally, something that's often overlooked or at least mentioned less, your application will need to handle all of this extra private data. So when you create your private application, all these cryptographic commitments, extra public keys, which are efficient to generate from a secret key within a snark, uh, Merkle tree stuff, it will all need to be contained in a database securely in your application. And you'll also need to do private messaging. So whereas conventional blockchain applications might glean a lot of their data from the blockchain because it's public data, you know, who owns what can be seen. Well, if we design our application to hide from the blockchain who owns what or what can be seen, in order for me to inform the person I've transferred money to that I have indeed transferred money to them, I'll need a private messaging channel and Nightfall has that. But what we found is existing blockchain app developers don't necessarily need this full suite of tools. What they prefer is for us to extract the important tools that they might not have the expertise or the time, or they might not have the funding to produce. Well, hopefully Nightlight is a pre-built library of tools that will enable those blockchain developers to get their apps private more easily, more quickly. Um, we also have extracted Merkle tree logic in, an, in a separate repository called Timber. So these are two new things, Nightlight and Timber. Um, and again, they're open source. So Nightlight comes as a NPM package, or you can visit the EY blockchain GitHub page, um, and you can take a look at the source code. Do with it what you want. Again, it's all open source, public domain. Timber again, open source, public domain. Again, an EY blockchain. So what I'll try to do now is I'll try to demo how we can take a very bare bones decentralized app and try to make it private. And I'll specifically look at an ERC721 contract. Uh, the most famous example being CryptoKitties, uh, where you can transfer uh, non-fungible tokens. Um, but of course, for business applications, underlying assets in supply chain, um, ERC721 tokens would be pivotal be pivotal to those as well. Um, so what we're going to look at is we're going to look at how we plug Nightlight into that application so that we can inherit all of the private transaction logic, the ZK snark proof generation tools so that we can attest to the fact that we wish to transfer value, all these extra private contracts that your app wouldn't ordinarily have, and also Merkle tree logic. We're going to try and look at an example to handle all of that. So what I can do now is I can switch over and we can take a look at Atom. Um, let's take a look at the code. So first we'll look at the existing bare bones app that we might have. So on the left hand side here, I've pulled together a demonstration app um, and something that conventional blockchain developers would be familiar with is a non-fungible ERC721 contract. So we'll start looking there. Um, and we can see this NF token contract is an ERC721 interface uh, contract. So it adheres to all the standards. This was taken from the Open Zeppelin library. Um, and, uh, there are other libraries available uh, to, that have been security reviewed that you can work with. Um, and this has familiar looking public transfer functionality. Um, so we can take a look here. Here's the transfer function. And you can see that the two, the person you're sending money to and the token ID are public. Everyone would be able to see who you are sending funds to. And so what we add to that is this privacy set of contracts. And you can find these privacy set of contracts in Nightfall or Nightlight. Uh, and if we compare the two, we compare the transfer against, for example, a public trans, uh, the private shield contracts transfer function, we can see that in the shield contract, there's less intelligible information makes its way to the blockchain. Instead of the person you're sending to and the thing you're sending, what instead gets sent is a proof, some inputs, which contain uh, non-descript items like the root of the Merkle tree and nullifier and a commitment. And if you're a conventional app developer, you might not know necessarily how to call this function, uh, how to in interact with this contract, how to generate a proof. And that's where Nightlight comes in. So Nightlight has the tools 
to allow you to interact with these extra contracts so that users who already use your application can instead use our application in a private way to transfer. So if we take a look at the JavaScript code which underpins this within our simple application, well, we have conventional getter and setter functions to interact with this regular public contract on the right here. Um, so getting things, invoking minting, invoking transfers. Well, what we can do, and I've created a demo script, we can import Nightlight, the set of tools, to so that we can interact with the shield contract. Um, and here, if I scroll down, we have tools to invoke a private mint via Nightlight. And the information we pass to the mint function is information your application will already be dealing with, token IDs, public keys, Ethereum account data. And then there's some information that is contained in the Nightlight documentation um, that is easy to send back and forth to the Nightlight application as well. What does Nightlight do with that information you send? Well, it will create cryptographic commitments for the user. It will open up a Socrates container. It contains pre-built arithmetic circuits to generate a proof which attests to the fact that your user wishes to transfer ownership of their funds privately. It will then send that zero knowledge proof, which is just elliptic curve points. It will send that to the blockchain, those pre-built shield contracts. Uh, those shield contracts will verify the zero knowledge proof. Um, that doesn't cost much gas. We've been working to bring efficiency down, like Paul said. Uh, and then once that proof verifies, the commitment will be stored in a Merkle tree on chain, and it will return to your application basic data, which you will need to store in a database. Um, but most of the heavy lifting is done by Nightlight, which is great. Um, now, your application might include more detail. It might have a user interface and all these extra things that traditional applications have. And another thing you'll need to handle is private data and private messaging tools. Um, but Nightfall, Nightlight's documentation makes it easy to know which information you need to send to the Nightlight library and the kind of information you'll get back and how securely you will need to store that information, particularly private keys um, for which you get which get passed into the ZK snarks will need to be stored in a very secure database by your application. So how do we install Nightlight? Well, it's like any other NPM package, NPM install Nightlight. And indeed within this application, in order to import the functionality of Nightlight, we have included Nightlight in our package JSON. Another thing that snarks have is uh, verification keys. Uh, and proving keys. And we use Socrates to generate those for us. And Nightlight includes a very simple function, generate Socrates files to do that trusted setup for you. Or if someone else has done a trusted setup and already deployed a shield contract, then you can utilize that. Um, so without further ado, I will jump into doing a demonstration. So what I'll be doing is deploying this simple application with all of the shield contracts around it. And I'll do a simple excuse me, I'll do a simple mint, create a public version of a token. I'll then transfer that token to a shield contract and receive a private representation of that token. And then I'll do a private transfer. Okay, so we'll start our containers and we will migrate all of those contracts to the blockchain. So what we're doing now, within containers, we're starting up a local instance of a blockchain on my laptop in Ganache, and we're deploying contracts a cryptography library, a ZK snark verifier contract, a shield contract, and the ERC721 contract. Now that's all been deployed, I will start the rest of the application with Docker Compose. So the rest of my application is starting now. Okay. So what's happening now is I'm deploying verification keys to the smart contract, to the shield contract, uh, using Nightlight. So it's Nightlight, which is handling all this logic for us. And Nightlight is also subscribed to the shield contract, listening for any new commitment leaves being added to the Merkle tree on chain. What I'll do now is I will have a look at the containers we have running. So we've got our app, we've got Timber, our Merkle tree instance, and we've got Ganache. 
what I will do is I will jump into the container of our app. Okay, we're inside. If we list everything, we've got everything we were previously looking at in Atom. And we've also got Socrates, uh, which Jacob and Thibaut will be talking about later. So we can generate zero knowledge proofs. And then we'll just run the demo script. And again, this demo script will mint tokens for us and transfer them. So what we're doing now is we're initializing demo values and we've successfully minted a token. We've minted a pizza token um, with a token ID for a public account. Now this is all public information that your conventional DAP probably has all at the moment. But then we've called Night Light and all this debugging information in green here is information and calculations being done by Night Light for, on behalf of your DAP. And what it's doing is it's creating cryptographic commitments and it's currently, as I speak, generating a zero knowledge proof, attesting to the fact that me, the user, wishes to create a private representation of my token. And there we go, there's my zero knowledge proof. It's just three elliptic curve points. Um, and it's sent it to the blockchain, it's minted it. We used mimic hashing uh, rather than SHA-256 hashing, so the proof generated more quickly. Um, and we've minted our token. The next step is to invoke a transfer. And again, we just send simple data to Nightlight. It does all the heavy lifting, creation of commitments, proof generation, and communication with third parties. It creates a, a Merkle tree membership witness, and then it sends the transaction to the blockchain after it generates a zero knowledge proof. Um, so what I'd like to stress is the fact that Nightlight does all of the heavy computational lifting. And if we shimmy back to our slides, Hopefully it makes it easy for you as app developers um, to implement privacy into your application. Feel free to dive into the code. Feel free to open issues on GitHub. Feel free to ask questions. Um, we're always keen to have conversations to improve our tooling. And we're also keen to collaborate with other people on other projects. You know, if you have other privacy projects um, that might help our clients, businesses, achieve private transactions or private contract execution on the public blockchain. If, if your project might help us get to that quicker, we're always open to collaboration. Um, it's really exciting. The final thing I want to talk about is what next beyond transfers. So lots of ZKP presentations and lots of literature when it comes to blockchain focuses on just transferring ownership of fungible and non-fungible goods. But as Paul alluded to, um, we might be able, well, we can use the Ethereum blockchain to do more complex smart contract transactions. So business agreements, uh, the terms of those business agreements can be encoded in smart contracts. But still the problem with that is that some of the underlying data can be seen on the blockchain. So can we deploy private contracts to Ethereum where invocation of the functions is private the data being sent to those functions in pri is private and no one learns what function anyone is calling. Well, it turns out we think we can and we're working on a project at the moment that we're hoping achieves that, where the terms of a contract are private, invocations of any functions, any transactions are private, so no one learns what function you're even calling. So if you're a business and you want to send a shipment, even calling that shipment declaration function would be private. But nevertheless, the terms of those contracts can be enforced and they will be enforced through ZK snark verification. Um, so what we're working on at the moment on top of the EVM is something we're calling a ZVM, a ZK snark virtual machine or a zero knowledge virtual machine, um, which facilitates this gateway where any function execution is private. No one learns what functions anyone's calling, which is really, really exciting. We're gonna release a midnight client which is a gateway for users to interact with the ZVM. Uh, and therefore, beyond transfers, we'll be able to invoke any private smart contract logic. Um, more coming soon. What technology will we be using to achieve that? And are we using to achieve that? Well, Zexi, uh, the groundbreaking paper on zero knowledge execution, we're working with ideas from that paper. We're working with the elliptic curve that Yusef and his colleague uh, discovered. Um, and there's a talk from Yusef later today as well. And we're working with the Zocrates teams to add those elliptic curves to our project. Um, so really exciting stuff that we're working on. 
hopefully we'll be able to talk about more about that soon once we finish some of the coding. Um, so with that, um, I will stop my talk. Uh, but thank you very much. Um, please feel free to reach out. Please feel free to ask questions, open issues on GitHub. Um, and as I say, we'd welcome any contributions from the community.